Greetings connoisseurs of chaos and welcome to the second video blog uh, about my attempt to write a novel in 30 days, the 30 days being those of November, uh, universally called NaNoWriMo or National Novel Writing Month. I'm pleased to say that uh, progress is pretty good. This is day 19 of the challenge and well I'll not reveal to you quite yet how well I'm doing, uh, more of that in just a minute or so. Uh, how's it gone otherwise? There had been a couple of setbacks. First isn't really a setback, one was a planned holiday. Me and wifey went away for a couple of days to Scotland to see some friends, had a really great time. Because I knew I was going away, I had to anticipate that and try and get ahead of myself. So the couple of days before I went on holiday, um, I really sat down and blasted out quite a few thousand words. I even managed to get a couple of hundred done in a quiet moment while I was away. But it did mean that when I got back, I had to really try and hit the ground running. So in true style, I overdid it and uh, really was typing away. I knew what I wanted to write, but unfortunately, for the first time in my life, first time in my life, I got repetitive strain injury. Um, this swelled up like a balloon. It's still suffering a little bit. You can hear it cracking there. Um, that's what happens when things are inflamed. It was made a bit worse that I was doing a couple of gigs over the weekend, lifting lots of heavy equipment like amplifiers and speaker stacks and so on. So that kind of slowed me down a bit and I had to resort to finger tapping with one finger, uh, well, four fingers on one hand and one on the right. Um, but despite that, I'm back on course. So I've uh, got quite a few things planned in this video. I'm going to go over now and show you the NaNoWriMo page. Right, so what have we got here then? Well, the headline figure, the one you want to see, is this, uh, where it says total words written 32,807. Um, the graph shows that I'm on day 20, so I'm sort of on the cusp of 19 and 20, because although I've filled in today's total, um, I started doing that last night. So it sort of spanned over midnight. Now, according to this, I should finish, if I continue with this rate, on December the 1st, which is a day over. But you'll notice that the words per day to finish on time are only 1,563, and my target's 1,667. So I don't think I'm going to have a problem completing that. So, yep, very pleased with that. It's on course. What I'm going to bring you up next with is the whole idea of how writers go about completing their stories and there are two types of writer apparently and this next little video snippet explains that and shows where I am on that spectrum as it were. So types of writers we're going to classify them into architects and gardeners. First of all the architect. Architects are sometimes called outliners or planners. Examples of these types well, you may not have heard of him, but James McCrete is one. He's written rather a good book called Before You Write a Word. Very prescriptive he is, but very useful. K.M. Wyland is definitely a planner. She's got a brilliant blog. Uh, if you're a writer, subscribe to it. Chuck Wendig, one of my favourite writers. Again, brilliant blog. Swears a lot, but very funny with it. He is definitely a planner. What about the gardeners? Well... They're sometimes called discovery writers or pantsers because they fly by the seat of their pants. Examples? Well, of course, there has to be the great Stephen King. He's the one often quoted. He doesn't know the ending of the story when he starts it. Who else? There's an author named Cora J. Ramos. You may not have heard of her, but she writes um, romance mystery type. George R. R. Martin? Well, you've all heard of him definitely a gardener. What are the advantages of being an architect? Well, you're less likely to get lost. James McCreet would definitely say that. Disadvantage? Some say it's too prescriptive. On the other hand, gardeners. What's the good points about those? The main thing is you can be more inspirational, or whatever that means. On the other hand, disadvantage. Take George R. R. Martin. When is he ever going to finish his song of ice and fire? So where am I on this spectrum? Well, if we draw it out as a continuum, I'm going to put here on the left 
architects, planners. Whereas on the right, you've got your gardeners. Midpoint is in the middle. Where would I place myself? Well, we'll come to that in a minute. Stephen King's definitely a gardener. We'll put him over there as an example. Architect, well, let's choose James McCreet. He's probably the most extreme example. Me, well, if I'm writing a novel, I would say I'm about here. Certainly Microphoria is planned out, but I leave quite a bit of room for discovery. On the other hand, if I'm writing a short story, then definitely right over here in the gardener mode. I like to just start with a statement or an idea and I just don't have a clue where it's going to end up. Sometimes these short stories start to turn into novellas or no novelettes and uh, I end up being about here. So there you have it. Right, quick interlude here. Um, thought I'd tell you about another characters in the novel Microphoria. Uh, based on this picture, I am under the impression that in fact this guy is some sort of famous actor. I got it off Pinterest. Uh, if you can tell me who it is, then please let me know. But uh, anyway, it seemed to suit the sort of character I was looking for. Uh, his name in the story is Detective Inspector Wesley Skinner. And he's got a bit of a checkered past this guy, as have a number of people in my stories, because let's face it, they're the most interesting types of people. It would be a bit boring if he was just a bland, straight down the middle kind of guy. Well, maybe it wouldn't, but it makes it easier if they're a bit interesting. And this guy's interesting. He uh, was on the Met, which is the London police force. Don't know a great deal about how the police works. I have to do a lot of research into that and then run it past a friend who sort of checks it all and verifies it. But uh, He's introduced in the story as a bit of an impatient guy. He's been shipped up north because of something that's happened in his past, which seems a bit shameful. And he's constantly referring back in his mind to some training, some psychoanalysis that he had to have to get him through to the next stage, which was basically keeping his job. So we don't know exactly what that thing was. And to be honest, I don't know yet, but maybe that will be revealed by the end of the novel. Uh, anyway, he crosses swords with the protagonist, Jim Alberton, at a fairly early stage, and he plays quite a central role. Uh, how it ends up with him, I don't know, because that's the gardener bit of me writing. I've left that a bit open-ended, and I'm going to let him sort of write his own destiny. So that's uh, Inspector Skinner. Right, moving on to the next bit, I've got uh, three snippets from my writing habitat um, so let's look at where I've been writing during the last fortnight or so. Anyway, this is old Meg's tea room in a place called Gillsland. And I come here usually on a Monday. And it's got a great ambience, this place. And it's named after a poem by, I think it's Keats. I could be wrong on that. But uh, the whole rhyme is written on one wall of the cafe, which you can see here. And I'll just read out a couple of the lines because you might not be able to make it out. But if you want to read it and find out for yourself, then by all means, uh, look it up. It says, Old Meg, she was a gypsy and lived upon the moors. Her bed, it was the brown heath turf and her house was out of doors. Um, so, yes, there it is. That is Old Meg's Tea Room in Gilsland. OK, so this is the second little snippet. Yet another of the places where I go to write. And as it happens, this is also one of the places that features in the story Microphoria. Uh, it occurs in, I think, the third or fourth chapter. So, uh, yeah. Off the Wall, it's called. Great place. There you go. That's what they put on offer. Lovely cheese scones, lovely coffee, and an art gallery to boot. Brilliant. So, that is the roundup complete. Um, things are on course, as I've said. I'm very pleased about that. The only guilty point I have is that uh, it's taken quite a bit of putting together these video blogs, and as such, I originally intended for it to be four. I think it's probably going to be three now. So the next time I see you will be at the end of the month, round about day 30, and hopefully I'll be reporting to you that I've finished the novel, or finished the 50,000 words required by NaNoWriMo. Um, I'll include a few more bits about writing Habitat, 
um, one or two things about characters, and something else as well, of which I haven't decided. Anyway, until then, all that remains to be said is Excelsior!